Hello my amazing artists, Mrs. Eastburn here with another activity that you can do at home with your family. Today I'm going to be showing you how to do salt dough. I have a recipe for you to follow so if you have these materials feel free to join in. You will need two cups of all-purpose flour, one cup of salt, and just one cup of cold water. Okay my amazing artists, this is the first time Mrs. Eastburn's ever made this recipe so let's see how it goes. Try it with me. So. I have my two cups of flour that gets poured into the mixing bowl first. Once you've done that, you add in your one cup of salt. Before you add any of your water, it's super important that you take the time to mix your, ingredient, your dry ingredients together so that they are well mixed before you start adding the water. Now, the water is a different story. You're not going to dump in the whole cup of water all at once. You're only going to add a couple tablespoons of water at a time until you, your dough is the right consistency. By consistency, I mean that it's easy to move and easy to push around. Okay? So let's do that now. I'm going to start by adding just two tablespoons of water and starting to mix that around a little bit. I notice that my, my dry ingredients are getting a little harder to push around, but they're not quite sticking together as they should be yet. So I'm going to add a couple more tablespoons of water. It's important to not add too much water as you go along because you don't want your dough to get too wet. Right now I'm up to six tablespoons of water. Now we're going to make it eight. Make sure that you're scraping the extra salt and the extra flour off the sides of your bowl as you're mixing. And now as it starts to thicken, it's almost time to start using your hands. I'm going to add a couple more tablespoons of water, give that a mix, and then I'm going to give it a squeeze. Now, boys and girls, it's okay to get a little messy while you're doing this. When you have a lot of flour involved, even when I'm baking, I get a little messy. But that's part of the fun. As you squeeze it, it shouldn't be sticking to your hands too much. You see how my hands have only a little bit of flour? But it's not quite sticking like it should yet. I'm going to put a couple more tablespoons of water in. This time I'm going to go, and let's see, give it a squeeze. And I think I'm going to go with four more tablespoons. So... That's my total of four, and let's give it some squeezes. This is really fun. Look how dirty I'm getting. <laughs> but I'm still not getting that desired texture that I want. So I'm going to add a couple more tablespoons of water and keep kneading it. You can still see I've got a nice clump going to one side, but I have a lot of flour just still over here. So I'm going to keep adding that water in. And look, now I'm getting my tools messy. But again, that's part of the fun. What I did that time, boys and girls, is I took the water and I placed it directly in the spot that was still full of powder. Try to keep one of your hands at least a little clean so that you can use it to hold the bowl. This is looking more like I want it to. I think maybe just a little bit more water. Okay. Now as I move my dough around the bottom of the bowl, you still see a little bit of powder. Try to kind of stamp that powder back up into your dough to try to include it into what you're kneading. If you don't know what kneading is, boys and girls, it's when you take your dough, just like when you take your clay, and you push it down and compress it to get what you need. So look, I now have my dough. I can bring that out onto the countertop, and now this is the hard part because you have to work those muscles. For 10 minutes, you're going to knead your dough over and over. Roll it into a ball, push it back down, roll it back up, push it down, flip it over, 
Have fun kneading. I'll be back in 10. Boys and girls, I was only halfway through my kneading in about five minutes, and I enlisted some help over here because my muscles were getting tired. Don't forget to include your whole family in this activity and make them put their muscles to work too. Okay, boys and girls, after about 10 minutes of kneading, I hope your arms aren't too tired, now it's time for you and your dough to take a rest. You need to take your dough ball and place it into a bowl, and it needs to take a rest for 20 minutes before you do anything else. So go enjoy some more time with your family, set a timer for 20 minutes, and I'll see you back then. Okay, boys and girls, so after about 20 minutes, your dough is ready to be rolled out. So you take it, plop it on the counter, and start flattening it. If you have a rolling pin at home, that's a real handy tool. You can see Wes is using as much as he can, a little bit even pressure to get the dough to spread out. You can have two people helping out with this, because Wes, can you pause for one second? It's good to flip it every once in a while so that it doesn't get stuck to your counter. Try to roll it out as evenly as you can. We're going to roll this out and we'll be back with you in a moment. Okay, boys and girls, now that you have your dough rolled out to about a quarter inch thick, it's time to cut out the shapes how you want to. If you don't have cookie cutters or something like that to use at home, with an adult's help, please just use a butter knife to cut out the shapes that you would like to use. We do have some here at the Eastburn household. So, Wes, what have you picked for us today? The mustaches. We're going to be doing some mustaches. So, all you do is you take your cookie cutter, you place it on your dough, and in an even pressure, push down. Just then like that. Lift. Make sure you come all the way down and then you give it a little wiggle and go ahead and lift it out. Okay? What we're going to do is we're going to cut out a bunch of different shapes and then we're going to peel the dough off. So I'm going to choose some dinosaurs. That's a shout out to one of our little friends in preschool. He loves dinosaurs. What else do we have? A bat. Ooh, and my favorite. At Christmas time, we make ninja bread men. So let's make one of those, too. Since we still have a little more room, are you a pumpkin? Sure. Wes just asked, since we have a little more room, can we do one of the pumpkins? Cut out as many shapes as you want. Because remember, once we peel this back, we could always roll it back out, roll into a ball, roll it back out until it's nice and thin, and cut some more out. So right now, we're just going to carefully peel back all the excess dough and see what kind of shapes we're left with. Now while you do that, you can preheat, if you, well these can air dry boys and girls, but if you want them done dried out a little more quickly, you can use your oven set at 250 degrees for about two hours. Please have an adult help you with that because you'll need to lay down some parchment paper on a pan, then lay your ornaments on top. You can see that we've got a little brontosaurus. A pumpkin. And we're going to lay them out on the pan. You can see that we've covered with the parchment paper. Be careful when you're peeling them off, boys and girls, because some of them will be a little stuck to the counter. Oh, I like that. Let's each get a mustache. We made some mustaches. It's mustaches. Okay. Remember to have fun and be silly while you're doing this. Lay them out on your tray. You see how we have more room for more, and we have that big ball of dough still. So we're going to finish putting these on, and then we're going to roll it out some more until our pan is filled up. Boys and girls, a couple things I wanted to talk to you about as we're finishing up our tray to put in the oven is if you'd like to color your dough before you start kneading it, in the very beginning of the process when you're mixing the, fl the flour, the salt, and the water, you would add a couple drops of food coloring to get the desired color that you want. Once you get to this stage and your dough's already done, once our, our um, ornaments come out of the oven, we'll let them cool, and we've decided that we're going to paint them. So I'll post some pictures of those finished paintings. But before I do that, I wanted to talk to you real quick about if you want to use these as ornaments, it's really important that you remember to poke a hole in them. You can see Wes using a straw right now to poke holes in his ornament to create the face, which I'll show you some of the different things that we did on here. We're even trying, like I told you, this is my first time experimenting with salt dough too. So we're going to try to make some beads and see how they come out. I've used the straw to poke a hole all the way through the dough. Let me, can I borrow this real sec, bud? 
you take your straw and you push it all the way through, creating a hole all the way through, and then you place that onto your tray. If you'd like to create these into ornaments, it's really important that you use a straw or a knife to poke a hole through your ornament all the way down to the tray so that you'd be able to string yarn or, um, or just string through the back of it to hang it. Remember, if you want to bake these, it's 250 degrees in your oven for two hours. But remember, get an adult's help to do that step and make sure that you cool them off before you paint them. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I certainly enjoyed making these ornaments, and I'm going to enjoy painting them later. Thank you, guys. Have a great night.